My name is Father Raymond Collins. I am a Redemptorist speaking to you from St. Alphonse's Villa in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, an assisted living facility for my Redemptorist brothers. Today, I welcome you to our Gospel Reflection for the 28th Sunday of our church year. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus, again in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw one man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast them into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. Invitations to great events like weddings, birthdays, and anniversaries are chances to socialize and celebrate together the blessings that fill our lives with joy. And so in today's liturgy, Isaiah, our prophet, and Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew remind us that above and beyond the invitations we extend to one another are the invitations of God. In the first reading, the prophet describes a sumptuous banquet hosted by God for all peoples. Not only will there be food and drink in abundance, but also healing, forgiveness, salvation, and great rejoicing. Just as the image of the vineyard from last Sunday was a standard symbol for the people of Israel, banquet imagery was an apt metaphor for describing God's saving love. And in a very dry land where most of the population scraped by with the bare necessities, a free banquet of rich food and choice wines was equal to paradise. The banquet would be located on a mountain the special place of God's presence. It would also provide an opportunity for forgiveness and healing. Death would be destroyed. So when Jesus began to exercise his ministry as Messiah, he drew upon this rich banquet tradition in order to describe God's coming reign. Some of his contemporaries thought they were assured of places of honor at God's banquet because of their exacting study and implementation of the law. But Jesus challenged their self-righteousness by his actions and through his choice of table companions. 
in response to those rejecting the invitation, Jesus sends out new messengers to the wrong parts of town and invites everyone, the riffraff, the nobodies, the blind and the lame, the people who thought they had been forgotten, dining with the poor and the outcasts of his society, Jesus indicated that God's invitation was extended not just to the upright, but to all. A place at the table could not be earned. It was God's to give and, if necessary, God's to revoke. How fitting that just before the gift of himself on the cross, Jesus hosted a banquet where he offered his followers the means to commune with him after his departure. With gifts of bread and wine, he offered his very self as food. After his resurrection, he would continue to be made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Those who are privileged to share at the table of the Lord on Sunday, the day of the Lord, are called to continue that sharing in their daily lives. If God's banquet truly provides for all peoples, if Jesus invited everyone to share his table and his very self, what challenge does this pose to us 21st century believers? The sacred authors of the scriptures that we hear today are asking whether we are alert to the invitations that God sends into our lives each day. A preacher called Shank warns us that before we answer too quickly, nothing is more important than God or God's invitations. We ought to examine our gods. So who or what is our God? Maybe one way of answering this question is to consider how we respond to the many invitations in our own lives. Some of these are standing invitations that invite us to gather regularly for worship. One pastor at the end of Mass always used to say, my friends, this has been the highlight of your day, and it's all downhill from here. This way of affirming the celebration of the Word and of the Eucharist as the source and the summit of our lives, remained with his parishioners who struggled to value all else in their lives as secondary to and dependent upon that time of sacred sharing. God's invitations reveal themselves in other ways as well, through the persons who reach out to us in their need. God invites us to share. Through, to those who suffer injustice, God invites our advocacy and responsibility at the ballot box. Through those who have no one to speak for them, no one to uphold their rights to live and work without fear, God invites our persistent involvement on their behalf. In the warmth of friendship and harmony in our family, God invites our gratitude. In the pain and turmoil of strained relationships, God invites our perseverance. There is a funny twist at the end of today's gospel about the one who did not have on the proper wedding garments. Now you may say, hey, they came in from the street. How do you think they would be dressed? The exclusion may seem rather harsh, but the message is something is missing. Love, justice, truth, mercy, and holiness are the wedding garments in which we are clothed. It serves as a reminder to us and to all. Just showing up is not enough. The grace of being invited to the Lord's table then is now does not excuse us from wearing the appropriate garment, that is, putting on Christ with our whole heart, soul, and mind. Every Eucharist tells us that we have a place at the table, and this table prepares us for another table at the end of time, when all peoples will gather and the Lord will move among us, wiping every tear away, and death shall be no more. As the bread and wine are changed, so are we called to change. Let that be so. Amen. Let us pray. 
We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you for joining our Redemptorist online preaching. We hope you will join us again next Wednesday when Father James Wallace will be preaching.